post-processing filters. So, what are the basics? Well, first of all, the post-processing filters are not computer graphics related, and there is a special field of computer science that studies post-processing, and that is called image processing. Well, the difference is basically that we are filtering images instead of filtering or like working on real-time data on real-time images that are virtual image. So computer graphics works within a virtual environment instead of concrete environments that can be a real image. An image shooted with a um, camera or uh, like a video, these kind of things, a real video affected by noise. Instead, in virtual images we have no noise, we are actually working with games and these kind of things that most of the time comprehend virtual images, images that are like perfect. So we're dealing with filters, but what are filters? Filters can be many many things, for example a single value filter that is called an intensity transformation and one example is the image negative. Doing an image negative we are basically applying a filter over each pixel of the image and then we invert the intensity of that pixel. Also filters can be matrices where we can uh, apply a filter matrix over a single pixel and then we can obtain a new value by like doing some operation over a pixel and the neighborhood of that pixel. Also we can use filters as operation inside a for loop so basically we can use a filters like algorithms, real algorithms that run over a single pixel value. The best approach is filtering with matrix because matrices gives you the control over the pixel and his neighborhood and it's a more human comprehensible behavior so yeah matrices are the best kind of filters. Real-time computer graphics also requires fast filters uh, instead image processing doesn't care about it because it can process the image and give you an output of an image also 10 minutes later because no one cares but in uh, real-time computer graphics we actually require fast filters because we are doing fast processing of the image. So no medium filter because uh, for instance uh, a medium filter needs expensive operations like sorting and also we cannot use uh, the frequency domain operations these kind of things that most likely you will not know but yeah in particular also edge detection techniques that with real images is a tough thing to do because we need to deal with noise to like saturations issues and these kind of things instead with the real-time computer graphics we are not dealing with that because we have no noise affecting our image or no extra saturation that occurs inside our image. So also the edge detection techniques are pretty straightforward and easy. Today we will see some filters uh, that are called blur filters. In particular, we will analyze the min filter, called also called like box filter. And in the next video, we will have a look at the best blur filters called Gaussian filter that improves basically the, the box filter with a, a Gaussian function that imitates a bell curve. I will show you what a bell curve is for sure. Also, we will see some edge detection filters in the next videos like Prewit edge detection, Roberts edge detection, Sobel edge detection, Laplacian edge detection and also Canny edge detection and we will see that many of these are really useful inside computer graphics but not useful in image processing and vice versa. Also, at the end of the series, we will see some VFX post-processing effects like differing effect, parallel distortion, nearest neighbor effects. There are really cool effects and we can use them in different ways and implementing them, like refining the implementation that I will give you, uh, will result in a good looking post-processing effect. Box Blur it's also called mean filter, arithmetical mean filter or box filter, and it simply blur a texture of an image. Uh, it's not so popular inside the computer graphics field because we have a better filtering technique such as the Gaussian blur, though this technique can be really useful for a simple blur effect. 
it's really fast to compute and can outperform the Gaussian blur and the medium filter obviously due to the simplicity of the filter matrix also called kernel and you can see the matrix right now these kind of filters are often used to obtain a motion blur effect or also a glowish effect over a material in fact the material gets blurred so we get his aura and then we re-render the not blurred object on the top of the blurred one this is where we usually engage the blur post-processing effect but we also have other vfx that exploits the blurring technique our algorithm considered two parameters iteration and texel size as you can see right now, uh, we want to consider an uh, n by n filter matrix in order to filter our scene image. The n factor determines the resolution of the filter and uh, it's also specified inside the for loop as iterations. So to higher n values, we will obtain a smoother blur effect, but also a more computationally intense filter. Because when we go through the image, we then need to compute for every single pixel the mean of n by n neighborhood. To give a simple example, if we set n by n to 3, we will filter the image with that kind of matrix, and uh, we are seeing right now a 3 by 3 matrix, but if we choose n equals to 100, we then need to consider a 100 by 100 filter matrix. And as you may recognize, the computation will increase of a huge, huge factor. Although this filter is pretty fast to compute because the pixel processing is done on the GPU, so it's a concurrent execution where its pixel values compute its own color by considering the neighborhood with a trick. Texel size. As we said, the algorithms run on the GPU, so it does not have access to other pixel values. In order to sneak past this limitation, we consider the original texture and then we use a certain offset to locate all my neighbors. If, for instance, we have a 0.1 offset and a 10 iteration, we will check all the pixels that are far from me 0.1 at first iteration, then the pixels that are far 0.2 far from me on the next iteration and so on and so forth until we reach one far from me, one unit distance far from me. This is a simple trick to avoid the limitation of concurrency of not working with the other pixel values. Another way is to use the texel size built-in parameters that holds the information of how far is a single pixel from our current pixel. It's basically the parameter that we were setting before but it's obviously more precise because it's set by Unity itself. With this offset in mind, we can then resample the starting image and obtain a non-weighted arithmetical average of the neighborhood of my current pixel. Sampling an image means that we are simply checking what color the image holds at a certain xy coordinates. This is done by a simple Unity function that inspects the matrix of an image and gets the value that is held at the pixel coordinate x and y of the image. The result is pretty amazing. As you may see, we have now a customizable working blur effect. With a few simple lines of code running on the GPU, we obtain this kind of effect. Also, it's already pretty optimized, so you can start from there and customize your own blur effect. In the next video, we will improve the blur effect algorithm by introducing the Gaussian blur filter, the best blurring or smoothing filter known. Hope you enjoyed the video and up until next time, cheers.